transgender athletes. I don't fucking understand that, you know? I understand it if, you know, you want to switch around. I don't give a shit. But I'm a sports fan. That's a really new concept to me, that you can be a dude, right? Ranked 80th in the fucking world. You have your dick cut off, you put on a sports bra, and now you're the number one tennis player in the world just coming out there with your man shoulder. That doesn't seem fair. I might be wrong. I might just be an old guy. I have no idea. But I'm hearing rumors like some of them are getting into that MMA. You can't have that shit. Am I nuts? That is a dickless dude beating the shit out of a woman. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He might as well hit her with his discarded dick like a flashlight. And... <laughs> Hold still. No, it's grounded. Her grounded pound is incredible. Okay, transgender fan. Hey, all right, look at me crossing over here. Hey, Billy, I've been listening to uh, the podcast since I was 16. I'm 22 now and I've enjoyed every episode, especially during quarantine. I'm a violinist, sculptor, and a trans man. Look at you. Uh, definition in the next paragraph. Thank you. And have been wanting to write in for a while. After hearing you read the letter a fan sent in about his trans friends attending his wedding, I thought now would be the time. Oh, beautiful. All right, let me do the recap. So this guy was um, getting married, and not one but two of his friends that he was going to have be groomsmen either had transitioned or were in the process of transitioning and he was like am i an asshole if i don't want him to wear a dress okay that was the question so me knowing nothing about the subject that didn't stop me from answering it that's in the i believe the previous or two episodes ago um all right so now we're going to actually hear from somebody uh living the life here first off i do want to clear clarify that by trans man I mean, I transitioned from female to male. Oh, fuck. Okay. I didn't get that. <laughs> I thought trans man meant you went the other way. Okay. In, in, in instrument rating, that would be reverse sensing uh, on a VOR uh, for all you pilots out there. In short, I'm a he. In your response to the fan that wrote in, you said that transitioning seems like a massive emotional process and you are exactly right. Hey, look at me. Look at me. Not bad for a thith white male. Uh, when I describe the experience, which I do openly, to create a dialogue for people who are generally curious, I often say that transitioning is not an option, but more so the only option for, for most people like me. Let me ask you this. Before you totally committed, was there any doubt? Like, okay, I, I hope, because, I mean, I hope I'm doing the right, I hope I'm getting this right. Because I can't tell you how many times I've misread my feelings. I mean, it, but the, the stakes were not that high. That's like fucking, you're going all in with the chips, so to speak. Uh, anyway, he goes, imagine you wake up one day with boobs and are, ha and are expected to wear heels. After the novelty of having 24-7 of having access to tits wears off, it fucking sucks. Let me read this again. Imagine you wake up one day with boobs and are expected to wear heels. All right, now, wait a minute. I thought you transitioned from a woman to a man. I mean, I, mean, I transitioned from female to male. Okay. It says, imagine you wake... Oh, maybe she's, uh, he's putting me in this? I don't know. Imagine you wake up one day with boobs and are, have, and are expected to wear heels. After the novelty of having 24-7 access to tits wears off, it fucking sucks. Nobody chooses to go through all of that trouble of being alienated from friends and family members on a whim. Well, there you go. You just answered my question. For me, if I wanted to have a future post-high school, I had to make this step, and I have avoided a lot of further mental dissonance, dissonance thanks to the scientists and surgeons who advocated for trans medicine. And yes, I will always trust the opinions of a scientist over a politician. Fair enough. As the wedding scenario goes, I can guarantee his trans grooms were just as conflicted as him. I also came out right before a relative's wedding and was given an ultimatum of, you either lie about your identity if you want to remain a part of this family or you won't be welcomed back into our lives. That is just fucking, can you imagine your family saying that to you? 
I ended up playing violin at their ceremony for free and never getting invited to another family reunion. Wow. That is really fucking sad. I'm sorry that happened to you. Uh, hopefully, uh, Jesus, in the near future, that doesn't happen. How do you disown a fucking, your own kid? I, d I don't get that. I don't get that. I mean, I draw the line of, you know, hearing my kid leave and then getting charged with the, at night and covering for a murder. <laughs> I mean, there are lines. Um, yeah, you do some dateline shit, you know. I mean, you're kind of out on your own. But I'd still visit you when you went to jail, and I would be like, where did I fuck up that made you do something like that? Um, anyway, personally, if I were asked to be a bridesmaid before coming out as a guy, I would, I would have stepped down because... I don't want to be the one guy in a traditional, traditionally female role. I'm betting this guy's trans grooms people felt similar. I have to fucking do the math on that. I would have stepped down because I don't want to be the one guy in a traditionally female role. Uh, I don't know what that means. I'm betting this guy's trans grooms people felt a sim similar. I hope you guys understood what that meant. I didn't get that one sentence. Okay, and here's where the rant opens up. All right, here we go. Taking the gloves off there. All right, a lot of trans people are, are, are really pissed by the false and performative allyship the far left has dumped on us with little work to back their claims up. Yeah, it's a fucking show. That's what I think so much of that liberal social justice fucking horseshit is. It's just for you to put on a little performance on your social media page. And people can be like, oh, wow, you're an ally. Here's your little rainbow fucking emoji. And then you can just go back to living your life and you're not getting your hands dirty. Um, it's like those white people that marched with Black Lives Matter as they were live Instagramming themselves. Like, look at me. I have a bandana on. I'm a fucking revolutionary. And then after that, they just went back to their life. <laughs> Got CrossFit in the morning. Um, we are identifying more as independents because we've experienced hate from the right and tokenism from the left. Oh, yeah, you get used. I mean, which is worse? At least, I mean, I know the hate, if it escalates to violence, is bad. But at least if somebody's just straight up says how they feel about you, as opposed to just using you. Um, anyway, I think a lot of your jokes about trans people are actually more about performative cis people. I don't know what cis means. Who are using trans issues for votes because they know we are a very vulnerable group. Uh, well... They kind of do that with everybody. I guess that's the only positive way. To, politicians always do that. They're always fucking looking for some fucking angle <clears throat> for themselves. Anyway, but not all. They're not all bad. There's got to be some good ones in there. Trans people just want to live a normal life, start a family, and not be claimed as a political pawn. I was at my lowest depression before I started hormones and got my chest masculiz masculiz masculinization procedure. What chest did you go with? Are they good enough that you can pick one out? Because personally speaking, uh, you know, I would I would go fucking Matthew McConaughey. Um, but here's the thing. You know what's funny is if they actually get it down someday where you could do that, all of these fucking people who are like anti-trans and all of that shit, if they find out that you can actually get a Matthew McConaughey chest and they're looking at their fucking man tits, they might do it. You know, I got the McConaughey. You know, you know, right before they fucking put the fucking gas on your face, you have headphones. And the last thing you hear is Matthew McConaughey going, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> and you wake up with a chiseled tan chest. Um, that'd be fucking hilarious if I did that as a redhead and my chest didn't match my, the whiteness of my head. Then I have to go reverse Michael Jackson, you know, do a reverse bleaching. Um, anyway. Let's not make this about you, Bill. Anyway, he says, uh, sh he says, uh, I haven't left the house in weeks. I hadn't left the house in weeks and nearly dropped out of school. Since transitioning, I'm happy, back on stage, volunteering, writing music. That's great. Teaching violin students, running my small business. There you go. Don't work for somebody else. And I have, have met someone special. Oh, 
look at you. I know I'm from an outside perspective being trans. I know from an outside perspective being trans seems crazy. If you knew the thunder and lightning between my fucking ears, I don't think anybody's crazy. I think it's fucking crazy to uh, go through life and not think that you're kind of fucking nuts yourself. You know, walking around thinking you have it all figured out. I think that that's fucking crazy. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, you know, like shit freaks me out without a doubt. I'm not saying this shit, but I will tell you when, when, Bruce became Caitlyn. There was definitely, you know, a what the fuck moment. Now I'm used to it. But what was weird about that was if you were like me, you weren't for some reason allowed to have that what the fuck moment, um, which is one of those things that the left is like psychotic with. It's like you, you, you got you to let everybody kind of go through their emotions as long as they're not hurting anybody. They're pr- you're processing it. That's all right. So anyway. This person says, I felt the same way until I realized I would always be, ang- be an angry, sad person if I had stayed in the closet. I started listening to your podcast the same month I came out back in 2017 and have not been offended by the jokes about trans people. Contrary to what the far left or right wants you to think, trans folk have a pretty thick skin and we're no strangers to having, having to advocate for our rights. I've been doing a lot of work on undoing the anger I built up over my teenage years and listening to your show has given me laughs when I needed them the most. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Wasn't that great? Look at me, huh? I'm going to make that whole fucking thing about me. You know, the appeal of me, it's just really amazing. And you guys, I just want to say as a podcast justice warrior. um, All right, so if anybody is listening to this, and your kid is gay and they came out and you disowned him. Can you can you not do that to him? That's such a fucking horrible, horrible thing to do to somebody. Um, it really is. It really is. It's like, you know, just try to be, uh, you know, just fucking work your way through it. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> I don't I don't I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. That happens to me with one of my kids. I mean, it's you just be who the fuck you are and don't be a fucking asshole to other people. That's all I ask. Can you just do that? Great. All right. So anyways, I'm glad you're here to taper this part. Uh, so I was I was over here and, and Mia showed me the cover of what magazine was that? Vanity Fair. Vanity Fair. Are we talking about Caitlyn Jenner? Yeah. The Kardashians. You just blew it. I was going to oh. fucking build the whole thing up and then, because I was looking oh, at it going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how do I know? I'm like, how do I know that chick? Is that somebody we know? You're like, she's, I know that she, woman. And I'm thinking, she's not good enough. She's not good looking enough to be on the cover. Is she a publicist? Is she some famous publicist? And then it was me, Caitlyn Jenner. Caitlyn with a C. Mm-hmm. Wow. I gotta tell you, man, that is the Congratulations, most. Congratulations, Caitlin Cakes. <laughs> I know, I gotta tell you, that is the most. That's the most hardcore thing I've ever seen played out in, like, uh, all that Marilyn Manson shit and Alice Cooper and Ozzy biting the head off a bat. Nothing compares to the what the fuck factor. And I'm not saying, I'm not, you know. You're comparing like like shock the rock, shock shock rock tactics to someone becoming transgendered. I really don't. Somebody think on the that same you knew, plane. somebody that you That's knew, not. Can even you let me? A, can you let me continue with it. your ignorant thoughts? Sure. No, this you know you shouldn't <laughs> say that. This is the first time I ever experienced this. I had to be able to fucking say what I'm thinking. You see That's his own true. his own daughters are going like. So wait a minute, <laughs> you're going to be bothering my <laughs> my toenail polish. They got to get their head around it. I'm yeah. allowed to get my head around it. That's God true. bless them. Okay, yeah. that's what he wanted to do. She. Well, he did it. Now he's a sh- now he's a she, is he? But he still yes. has his dick, right? Bill. Does he? She wants to be called she. She wants to be called Caitlin. Okay, I'm cool so with that. Call, call her she. I'm all right with that. She has not had surgery. No, she has not. I think that's something she might she, do in the future. Okay, so she has a penis, and she's she's still a she at this point. Correct. So not, the reality is, is you don't have to do any of that. You can just say, I want to be called she, and people should just respect it. Pretty much, because it's the whole idea about gender not necessarily being rooted in physicality or sexuality. It being more of a state of mind. So this is like some... Which is a big debate, of course. But, so this is like some Ornette Coleman shit. Who's that? With your body. 
Ornette Coleman, he was one of those guys who played so free with jazz, there was really no one. And even like Charlie Parker would walk off the bandstand going, I don't know what the fuck these guys are playing. <laughs> okay. Is that right? <laughs> 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 I think mm -hmm. this is a groundbreaking thing. Yep. That he's the first, and he will be like, he's like the, uh, I don't know. First what, though? Well, I'm not going to wade into that fucking sinkhole. God knows I'll say the wrong fucking thing. There was, the, a trans, the first... there was a transgendered person on the cover of Time magazine last year, which was actually the first. No, no, but I mean her as far as... Her Cox from Orange is the New Black. What was her name before that? Larry? I don't know, and it doesn't fucking matter. I think you should you should keep your, like... She's like, I, 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 I would be... I go from Bill, I would be Beth. Would you? Beth oh, wait, can we talk about that? <laughs> Let's talk about if you decided to transition. Would you really go by Beth? No, I think, I, I think I'd be Janet, and I would be such a cunt. It would, <laughs> so it would be pretty much the same, right? Yeah. But you know me now as a male, I'm awarded for being an asshole. You know that, that ridiculous feminist theory? That if a woman does it, she's a cunt, but if a guy does it, they're like, oh, you want to be president? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking morons. Um, I feel like men are definitely the called microphone. assholes when they're assholes, but I don't think uh, they're morons for saying that. Men get to... Get to do what? They get to act, especially in business, in a more... Um, Let's say cutthroat, yeah. like a Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban's a fucking dick, but Mark Cuban is also brilliant and a really successful businessman. But I feel like more often than not, he gets called brilliant and amazing. No, he doesn't. Even he gets he's... called a jackass all the he time. Does? All the time. And he I runs people... out on the court and does all that stuff. <laughs> Get off the court, you jackass. I thought totally. people were always saying, like, you know, Mark Cuban is a, you know, business genius and... You know, I, no, I he know. is, but he is. He's undeniably is, but he does. He doesn't get good reviews. That guy gets trashed no, all the time. No, you know what it is? Is you guys have bad experiences with men while you're dating, and they get to be dicks and bang you and then leave, and you you never quite are able to wash that off. Um, so I think that you guys then look at us in a certain way. I'm able to separate my experiences from dating dicks to dealing with dicks in day to day life. I am not so simple minded and like one dimensional that it's oh, like oh my god, a guy dumped me one time and right. now they're all dicks. Like, are you fucking kidding me? But there was a period in your life you can't tell me that you didn't get a little petty. I did. I actually never did. I did all those guys that dumped me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had it. Uh, yeah, I didn't have. I, yeah, I didn't necessarily have the greatest right, track record with men, but I didn't write you all off because listen. of that. I still was looking for love. Listen. What? All right. So what I'm saying is, as far as like the most hardcore fucking thing I've ever seen, as far as just spinning your head around like holy shit, is the fact that Bruce Jenner, unlike that other woman who I don't even know who the fuck that is who's on Time Magazine, is that this guy, you gotta say my whole life, I've known this guy from like second grade on. Yeah. He won the decathlon, he was on the Wheaties box, mm -hmm. he was on chips, he got a nose job, <laughs> and then he disappeared, and then he came back on the Kardashians, and he was walking around in the background, and I remember Lawhead had this great fucking bit about, oh, yeah, uh, yeah just actually. being like, what the, f why are you sitting there getting bitched at? You got a fucking gold medal for the decathlon. They got you walking around in the ba background, you know, like, you know, I should be walking around with that medal around your neck or something, right? <clears throat> to then, I remember when, when TMZ was chasing around saying that he was having a sex, sex change. I was like, oh my God, leave the guy alone. You know, he doesn't like his face, you know, and I, uh, I don't know, he's, he's, doing whatever the fuck he's doing, and then it turned out they were right. And now when he comes out, call me Caitlyn. I mean, this is the thing, like, because what I don't, what I don't, is that there's going to be a lot of people that get in trouble as they're trying to fucking process this for the first time. This is their first time experience. And I think you want to allow people to have that, that first dumb thing that comes out of their mouth, not understanding and being like, what, but everybody's going to jump on them. You and know someone, someone will lose their, good point. Someone will lose their career. To sit there no, and watch this guy, way. like you wanted to be this guy. You uh -huh. wanted to be Bruce Jenner. I wanted my hair parted down the middle and fed uh -huh. it to the side. <laughs> I wanted to be a motorcycle cop. I wanted to do all of that shit. And then all, all of a sudden, I remember reading articles about him, like his fucking life. You know, he's in between, you know, girlfriends or whatever. 
And uh, they went to his house, and he had some Porsche Targa. I still remember this in sports Australia. A Porsche Targa in the garage that he walked by, and he ran his fingers along. He had a little bit of dust on it. I'm like, this guy, he sold this shit that he just has a leftover Porsche. I mean, this dude was like a guy's guy mm -hmm. that then, boom, go the other, that 180 the other, other fucking way. Yeah, I think people should be yeah. definitely allowed to be honest with it. I just feel like the cruelty is, is what's unnecessary. No, 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 not cruelty. But you ought to be able to say, like, Bruce, what the fuck? Sorry, Caitlin, what the <laughs> fuck? Wow. <laughs> Wait a minute. Like, were, can I sit down for a second? They were talking um, to one of his sons from his other marriages, like Brandon or something. And he's. <laughs> She lifted up her dress to show uh, his son her new boobs, no! he, and he goes, "Whoa, I'm still your son," because <laughs> it's like, "Yeah, whoa, wait, g just just give me a second. And then another one of his sons. No, but he would never if when he was no of show course, his balls. Of course, of course. it's where you came from, son. Of course, no, of course, it was definitely uh, that would be very uh, uh, weird. No, but that's always been my theory. But and the girls, other... girls who get fake boobs will show them to you like they got their nails done. Because it's an insecurity thing, so you gotta be like, see, check I out have, the girls. I have two friends with amazing boob jobs. I never would have known. They're so, they're so good. You gotta, you gotta pay for it. You know what I'm saying? You can't go out in there and get discount plastic. You surgery. don't go to Denny's when you get the boob job. Like right? whatever the facial reconstruction that Caitlyn has had is fucking amazing. Now, of course, she still is a handsome woman, but like it really, it looks good. And those, those. Tits, I don't know what you're talking about. What do you just mean she's still a handsome woman? Did you mean that she started off as a handsome guy? No, there are some women that are, like, handsome. This whole thing that I'm saying like right now, Catherine Nina, Hepburn. listen to me. This whole thing that I just said, what? Is, you mean, like, that this, this the handsome guy or, like, the woman right now? You know what? This, this, is, this whole fucking scenario is why I never watched Lost. What? That's why I never watched Lost. How did you Because they were go like, is this a dream state? Is there a fucking monster down here? What's going on? And then now you're, you're jumping back and forth on either side. It's like he's playing tennis against himself right now. It's kind of like your ADD <laughs> brain, actually. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah it's kind of like bringing around an insult, Bill. Look, I'm on vacation. I'm, I'm trying to have a good time. I'm not insulting you, <laughs> Um... Uh, but you know what else? Um, uh, one of his kids, also, her kids, see? Even I'm slipping with the pronoun. Oh, you homophobe, transgendered hater. <laughs> What's your career? We need to end it. Uh, <laughs> my career is lying around with you in France. Suck it! Uh, oh, that's that douche on Twitter <laughs> who gave me shit. <laughs> Anybody who starts a tweet with the word maybe, I, I'm done with. Yeah. Uh, Maybe don't blah blah blah. Yeah. Uh, what a cunt. Oh no, I was saying one of Caitlyn's uh, sons said, "I'm I'm I'm hoping, I think that or something like that. Caitlyn will be a better parent than Bruce was. Something Ooh. like that. No, I mean he's been. I mean, she's been pretty That's open funny. about it. And then if Caitlyn starts crying, be like, Caitlyn, I wasn't talking. To you. <laughs> I was talking, I was to, talking Bruce. to Bruce. <laughs> No, by uh, by all accounts, especially his his first set of kids, I didn't he like wasn't him there. Either. They were he Bruce wasn't there for them because he was a fucking man. And now that now that uh, now that Bruce has become Caitlyn, you think hey, that hey, Bruce, the femininity will Bruce be won the gold medal. Caitlyn still has to prove herself. She hasn't won shit yet. <laughs> <laughs> She's won all of our hearts. Um, all right, well, no. but you know something else. Then there's also the then falling all over yourself. There's, there's the ignorant being mean about it. Then also the going the other way where you fall all over yourself. And if Caitlin's being a cunt, you can't call her a cunt because <laughs> she used to be Bruce, which is bullshit. Well, I guess Bruce was an asshole because Bruce really wanted to be Caitlin and was struggling and was taking it out on other people and was literally running away. I think That's Caitlin is going to be... The biggest gossipy. She's gonna go to brunch and just talk shit about everybody in her immediate circle. I'm pretty excited to see how this unfolds. Actually, it's it's pretty major. Are you gonna watch the her show? No, I never watched the Kardashians. Oh, that's true. I hate those fucking shows. Yeah, that makes sense. 
And to be honest with you, I, I would have to, I'll, I'll just sort of walk by the TV and occasionally glance over. I need to ease my way into the fact. To, <laughs> you are. To you're going to watch it over my shoulder. And, I have, and, I, and I have the fucking right to do that. Yes, you do. Yeah. When you make that big of a fucking change. Jesus Christ, I shaved my head. People like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you gotta give people. You gotta have the. You gotta be courteous and let people like fucking guy. Right, let me. Uh, okay, okay. You should have like five minute visits, and then they they increase to ten, and you just gotta gradually like. I mean, you literally. It's like you killed off the other person. You know what I mean? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, like where are they? Yep, gone. Yeah. So then, it, and then it's weird. It's like, well, I I technically sh should be. Liking you, right? But you're not the other person, but you're still you. Mm -hmm. Do you think he did something like he sold his soul to the devil and he's like trying to beat the devil at his own game? And now he's <laughs> becoming like a woman at the end of his life so he no. can save his soul. And the devil's like, oh, where, where did Bruce go? And he's, like, and he's like, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> it's like Angel Hot. Are you talking about that movie with Lisa Bonet? Yeah, and Mickey Rourke is fucking great. <laughs> Louis Cipher. Um. Anyways, who knows? I don't fucking know. Bill Burr tackled <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> no, I didn't. I fucking I'm getting my head around it. As I, I should allow be I'm allowed doing. to do. All right. Can we find it? There we go. All right. This one's titled "Oh Jesus." Um, I am a 23-year-old man from Paducah, Kentucky. Now, why would you tell me that? I didn't want to read that. There's probably 18 people in your, your town, right? Needless to say, there isn't much to do. About five months ago, I met a girl who was two years younger than me and moved into town from East Kungamunga. Uh, we hit it off almost instantly. It was great. You know what? I'm going to have somebody bleep out this city. All right. I got to have him bleep out the city and the state. He goes, we headed off almost instantly. It was great. She is beautiful, educated, and has a great ass. Sorry. A little Al Pacino for you. Uh, we took things slow, and I found that to be something unique in today's time. Most girls give it up within a day or two, but she wanted to take things slow, and I appreciated that. I found myself falling head over heels for this girl. I hadn't been with anyone in over two years, and I felt that it, if she was, wait, and I felt as if she was a sign that maybe there was a bit of hope in this world to be happy, and she communicated with me that she felt the same way. Okay, so, about two weeks ago, we went out to a bar, and we had some drinks, played some pool, and had a great time, and ended up getting a little frisky with each other. I drove her home totally expecting that tonight would be the night I was going to bang this beautiful woman. When we reached her driveway, we started making out in the car and asked if she wanted to come in. She got real quiet and said under her breath, yes, but. And of course, I said, but what? And that's when she told me she is a transsexual. I literally yelled. I was so shocked by what I heard, I could hardly keep myself together. And I told her, him, whatever, that I wasn't going to go upstairs with her and I would call her tomorrow. And she got out of the car crying and said, I was born this way, like some Lady Gaga shit. Wait a minute, trans, what is, what is, what is transsexual? Like a hermaphrodite? Wait a second. Ah, oh, Jesus, Bill, you're, t you're too fucking dumb. Why do you guys, why do you guys write me? Is this, is this the fun, is this the fun part of it? Just finding out how fucking dumb I am? Transsexual, this is hilarious. Now I have this on my search en engine, transsexual. And Neil will use my computer and look up like transcontinental and transsexual is going to come up. Bill, is there something we need to talk about? Um, transsexual, here we go. A person who's undergone a sex change operation. A person whose sexual identification is entirely with the opposite sex. 
All right. Well, that just made me even more confused. So if you had an operation, how were you born this way? Or she's, or the person saying, I just identified with being a female. Oh, I see. Okay, so they had a set. So the dude had a sex change operation. Okay. He goes, I haven't spoke to her since. It's S I N C E, not S E N C S E. Um, that night, besides a few text messages. She's going on about how much she loves me and she is sorry she didn't tell me sooner. It's even gone as far as me having to turn off my phone because she won't stop calling. I've never been pursued like this before. What do I do? Part of me actually feels bad, but I can't see myself banging an ass every night while my sweaty balls slap against her sweaty balls. Now, wait a minute. I thought the person had the operation. Don't they remove that? You know, I don't fucking know. Regardless of how gay this may sound, I still think she's incredibly hot. I knew it was too good to be true. Should I tell her that I'm just not interested anymore and completely cut her off, or should I be her friend? Or should I go bang her ass? It's weird. The thought of banging her ass excites me, but the thought of her junk swinging around makes me want to throw up just thinking about it. Thanks, Bill, and come do a show in such and such state sometime, you fuck. Um, what should you do? Um, I don't know. I honestly don't know. What's funny is you're literally just like you're mentally where she is sexually. You know? I don't know. It, like, you got it. You got to. It's like you're standing on the state line and you got a foot in either state, just like her. You know. So, I think your your emotions are normal. And I hate when fucking people get offended by this shit, and they go, "That that's fucking you." You know, they get all offended like that dude is now a woman. It's like, no, that is a dude. That fucking uh, is a different kind of dude now. <laughs> you know, it's that's not a woman. It's still a dude. It's just a different kind of dude. You know what it's like? You ever see when somebody does uh, buys an old car and they take all the chrome off it? They want that nice clean look. Yeah, that's what they do to their 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 crotch. But, you know, that's a dude that took the chrome off. You know? <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Other than, uh, I, I don't, I don't know. Do, do, do like, that, that fucking, I don't, I don't know, dude. Do, do whatever the fuck you want to do, is what I, I would say. Let me go back and read what you said. Should I tell him I'm not interested anymore? Please cut her off. All right, part of me actually feels bad because I can see myself, because I can't see myself banging an ass every night while my sweaty balls slap against her sweaty balls. Well, if it makes you feel better, I don't think the balls are there anymore. Although, they might have kept them like a hood ornament. I have no idea. Ah, oh, Jesus. I really am a moron. Uh, regardless of how gay this may sound, I still think she's incredibly hot. You know, why don't you just split the difference and get a blowjob? I, I don't know what to tell you. That's so funny. I knew it was too good to be true, this poor bastard. Um, I, I, I would say this. I'd say you'd want to sit on that decision. Don't be like the Baltimore Colts in the 1983 draft. Did you guys just watch that 30 for 30 where they immediately walked up two seconds in and they selected John Elway? You know, rather than fucking waiting the full two minutes or whatever to see if anybody gave him an offer. And then they ended up with nothing. I, I, I would I'd sit on this one for a minute. Um, and I think that this person's actually pursuing you the way that they are because they're in a desperate situation. Which is, uh, the whole thing is, in reality, the whole thing is unfortunate. You know, people should be able to be who they are. 
you should be able to like who you like, and that person should be able to, from day one, say that they're transsexual without getting judged. The reason why they didn't say it was because they were worried about this fucking moment here, which, once again, is another sad, depressing thing about humanity. Um, I would say follow your heart, sir. You know? And not your balls. If you really want to find love. There you go. Balls in your court. No pun intended. All right. Advice for a young lady. Hey, Billington. Um, very, very original ones this, this, this week. People coming up with different ways to butcher my name. I'm, I'm enjoying this. I am in need of some advice for a young lady. I, and I love that some women are actually piping in, despite the fact how much I talk about hockey on this podcast. What are you saying? Women don't like hockey? Yes. So this is what I'm saying. In the darkness of the night, a flicker starts to glow. A beacon in the shadows, a light that starts to flow. Illuminating pathways where once there was despair. In the depths of obscurity, hope begins to flare. Like a flame in the wind, I ignite from within. Casting rays of brilliance, banishing the din. With each step I take, I brighten up the way. In the realm of shadows, I become the day. I'm the light in the darkness, the spark in the night. Guiding lost souls towards the morning light. Through the tunnels of uncertainty, I'll be the guide. For I am the bearer of hope in me, dreams reside. In the labyrinth of life, where shadows dance and play. I'm the ray of sunshine, turning night into day. With every glimmer I cast, I unveil the unseen. In the tapestry of existence, I'm the golden sheen. From the darkest corners to the highest peak, I'm the radiant glow that even shadows seek. With every flicker, every beam I emit, I dispel the darkness, I never submit. I'm the light in the darkness, the spark in the night. Guiding lost souls towards the morning light Through the tunnels of uncertainty, I'll be the guide For I am the bearer of hope in me, dreams reside In the symphony of life, I'm the crescendo's rise In the canvas of the universe, I paint the skies So let the darkness tremble, let the shadows flee For in the heart of radiance, I'll always be I'm the light in the darkness, the spark in the night. Guiding lost souls towards the morning light. Um, I'm an 18-year-old high school senior entering my freshman year of college. I got into my dream school with a scholarship. Ah, do you know how bad I wish that I did that? Wish I studied in high school. Anyways, and I'm moving out of my shithole town, and everything finally, finally seems to be making up for all the shit that I went through in high school. One of my really good friends is going to the same university as I am, and we're renting an apartment together. However, my friend is an 18-year-old straight guy, and I am a straight girl. Uh Uh-oh. The gender thing could add a whole other level of difficulty on top of adjusting to living with a new person in a new city. Uh, away from everything I grew up around. We've been friends practically since we were in diapers. We can talk, jam out to 70s rock, and watch the Chappelle show for hours, and we've never had issues with weirdness before. But I do understand that college introduces a lot of firsts, and I'm not going to lie, I'm a little nervous that a few too many... Oh, having a few too many drinks during a welcome weekend could lead to some inappropriateness where do things where do things have happened? Um, I don't want to do anything to jeopardize our nearly two decade long friendship. So this kind of sounds like you're a little attracted to this guy. If you're this worried that something's going to happen, or maybe you are. You're 18. You're going from your parents' house to all of a sudden living with the guy. Maybe that's what it is. I'm going to guess that that's what it is. So anyway, so my question: What tips do you have to stop anyone from stepping over the line? with a male-slash-female roommate. 
Also, in general, what tips do you have for living with a roommate? Nia's opinion on this would be epic. Thanks and fuck you. <laughs> yeah, that was Nia's great fuck you last week. Um, you know what? Maybe this Wednesday I will do another Nia log and I'll read this one. But right now I'll just give you my own ignorant um, thought on it. Oh, wait, wait. By the way, there's, there's a PS to this, everybody. There's an epilogue just like the streets of San Francisco. P.S. Might I add that we've both been in various relationships while friends. He often asks me for girl advice, and I ask him for guy advice. He currently has a girlfriend who I really like and am friends with, but they are breaking up in June when she leaves to study abroad. I am currently single. Oh, yeah. You guys are going to bang within fucking eight minutes. Within eight minutes of your, of your, your college career. Um, all right. So basically what you want to do, you're not asking me, should you or should you not move in with this guy? You're going to move in with this guy. So, um, what you're really saying is basically, how do I not fuck this guy? Well, I can only do it from the male perspective, which is what I would do is every morning before I ever even walked out into the living room. Was I would rub one out. <laughs> oh, God. To try to get that fucking, you know, urge out of me. I think what you need to do is sit down and talk with the guy. And just say, listen, we have a great friendship, but I don't want to ruin this. I know we're moving in together and everything. But, um,. You know, obviously, we're going to be in close quarters, you know, sharing a bathroom and blah, 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 blah. You, you know what you have to do? You have to lay down the law if that's what you really want to do. But if you actually like this guy, like I think you might, um, if you actually like him, like him, and think you could actually, did I just say that? If you like, like I mean, like, like him, like him, like him, do you know what I mean? Do you? Oh, my God, you guys. This could be the one. Um, if you actually like this dude like that, then you should not move in with him. You should be in a separate apartment. And uh, that way, if you start dating him, you don't immediately start by living with one another. You know, 